In the ancient land of Israel, amidst a backdrop of cultural exchange and religious diversity, a scribe set out to pen the opening chapter of what would become a foundational text for generations to come, the Book of Genesis. This scribe, drawing upon the traditions and beliefs of the Israelite people, sought to craft a narrative that would not only recount the origins of the universe but also convey profound theological truths about the nature of God and humanity. Genesis chapter 1 begins with a poetic depiction of the primordial state of the world, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. These opening words set the stage for a narrative that transcends mere historical account, delving into the very fabric of existence itself. The scribe portrays God as the sole architect of creation, speaking the universe into being with divine command. Each utterance, and God said, carries with it the weight of creative power, bringing order to the formless void. But what sets this creation narrative apart from others of its time is its monotheistic perspective. In a cultural milieu where polytheism was common, the Israelites boldly proclaimed the existence of one supreme God, Yahweh, who reigns over all. As the narrative unfolds, the scribe details the six days of creation, each marked by the divine utterance and the fulfillment of God's command. Day by day, the world takes shape, light pierces the darkness, the waters are divided, land emerges, and life teems in the seas and skies. Of particular significance is the creation of humanity. Unlike the gods of neighboring cultures who fashioned humans as mere servants or playthings, Yahweh creates humanity in his own image, imbuing them with dignity, purpose, and responsibility as stewards of his creation. Through symbolism and allegory, the scribe conveys profound theological truths about the goodness of creation, the sovereignty of God, and the unique role of humanity in the divine plan. As you journey through Genesis chapter 1, you are invited to ponder the mysteries of existence and contemplate your place in the grand tapestry of creation. For in these ancient words lies a timeless message, that the universe is not a product of random chance or chaos, but a deliberate act of divine will, guided by love and purpose. The Holy Bible New Living Translation The Book of Genesis Chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters, to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space, sky. And evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. And that is what happened. God called the dry ground, land, and the waters, seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the third day. Then God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and years. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that is what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day, and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. 
Then God said, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Let the fish fill the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And evening passed and morning came, marking the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And that is what happened. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look! I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed and morning came, marking the sixth day. Now that we've explored Genesis 1, together, let's consider how these timeless truths apply to our lives today. In Genesis 1, we witness the magnificent power and creativity of God as He brings the universe into existence. As we reflect on God's creation, let's be reminded of His sovereignty over all things. Just as He spoke the world into being, He continues to speak life and purpose into our lives today. Let's trust in His power to bring about transformation and renewal in our hearts and circumstances. Furthermore, let's apply the principles of order and purpose found in Genesis 1, to our own lives. Just as God brought order out of chaos, let's invite Him to bring order to the areas of our lives that may feel disordered or chaotic. Let's seek His guidance and direction as we fulfill the purposes He has uniquely designed us for. May the truths we've uncovered in Genesis 1, inspire us to trust in God's power, live with purpose, and embrace His plan for our lives. Heavenly Father, we come before you in awe and reverence as we reflect on the profound truths revealed in Genesis 1. You spoke the world into existence with a word, and your power and creativity are beyond our comprehension. As we ponder the beauty of your creation, may we be reminded of your sovereignty and goodness in our lives. Help us to trust in your plan and purpose for us, knowing that you are always at work, bringing order out of chaos. Guide us, Lord, to be faithful stewards of your creation, caring for the earth and all living things with love and responsibility. Teach us to embrace the gift of Sabbath rest, finding renewal and refreshment in your presence. May the truths we've uncovered today inspire us to live with gratitude, purpose, and reverence for you in all that we do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.